Here's one of the things that's going to be most confusing to you is the fact that these equations that we have here look exactly like the ones we've been working so far. There's nothing in your brain right now that should be firing off any warning flags that says, uh-oh, I'm going to get some imaginary numbers. I'm going to have negatives inside of square roots here. But you're going to in each of these. And so it just so happens that, that I've set them up this way. I mean, that's not the way the homework's going to work. It's going to be a mixture of some that do and some that don't. But here's how you handle it when you come across a negative inside of a square root sign. On this problem, there's a couple of ways that I could do this. x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. I'm going to do it the easiest way I know how, which is to say I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So if I subtract 9 from this side, it goes away. I'm left with negative 9 on the right now. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'm going to remember the plus or minus. So I end up with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Well, the square root of positive 9, you know it's 3. Right? And so from the last video, you should know that this is 3i. x is equal to plus or minus 3i instead. In other words, there are no real solutions, but there are two imaginary solutions. Over here, second example, x squared plus 4x plus 5. I think about that for a second. If I want to multiply two numbers to get 5, I've got to have 1 and 5. Either both positive or both negative, but they have to add it to 4. That's not going to work, is it? So it's not factorable. Um, let's say on this one, let's say I want to complete the square just to show it, okay, instead of quadratic formula. So if I wanted to complete the square on this one, I would first move the 5 to the right side by subtracting it from both sides. I would take 4 and divide it by 2. That's 2. And then I would square the 2, and that gives me 4. And so now I know that I can add 4 to both sides. And I've done this in previous videos. If you don't know what I'm doing right now, you need to go watch the one on completing the square. But I'm going to add 4 to the left. And to be fair, I've got to add 4 to the right. The reason I did this is because that's x plus 2 times x plus 2. That factors out, right? This left-hand side. It's x plus 2 squared. A perfect square every time. And on the right-hand side, I have 4 minus 5. I have a negative 1. Now, to get rid of the square, square root both sides, square root both sides, don't forget the plus and minus. And on the left, I have just the x plus 2, because the square root and the square cancel each other out. On the right-hand side, I have plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which we know is i. Last thing, this is x plus 2, so I need to get the 2, by, the two away from it. I need to subtract it from both sides. And I'm going to write negative 2 plus or minus i. Two solutions. There they are. One more. Here we go. I probably should have a calculator in this one. That's going to be some big numbers. So on this one, maybe, because I don't want to bother with factoring, on this one I'm going to just set it up like quadratic formula. a is 4, b is negative 24, and c is positive 37. So now that means that x is equal to negative b over 2a, positive if you need to, to write it down, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Definitely should have had a calculator there. I'm going to have to do 16 times 37 in my head. That's all over 2a. So pause if you need to to write it down. That's the quadratic formula, right? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Fun stuff, right? Let's get this one reduced first. Let's see, that's a negative, double negative here. So that's really positive 24. And 2 times 4 is 8. I'll reduce that in a second. You could probably do that in your head if you wanted to. Over here, i got the square root of 24 squared. Jeez, I wish I had a calculator. Pause for a second. Here we go. How about that? i got one right here. 24 squared is 576 minus 4 times 4 times 37 is 592. And that is all over 2 times 4, which is 8. Now it's time to simplify what's inside that. 576 minus 592 it turns out to be a negative 16. 24 over 8, I can reduce. That's 3 
plus or minus the square root of, it turns out that stuff inside the square root is just negative 16 over 8. A common mistake here is for people to say 16 over 8 reduces to 2 over 1. It's the square root of negative 2. And that's not the case. In order to reduce this fraction, I first have to get the stuff outside the parentheses because it's not 16, it's the square root of 16. That's really, isn't that 4? I? So, without taking the 8 into consideration first, let's do this. 4i, and then we'll say that's over 8. And now the 4 and the 8 can reduce. That's really 1 over 2, right? So I end up with 3 plus or minus a half an i. A plus or minus b i, where a and b are just numbers. If that makes sense, then we're almost done with this lesson.